Good evening there, everybody. What is happening? Hopefully, y'all are having a wonderful day today. So when it comes down to it, I thought that I would have this little interesting topic of a discussion, or at least, I don't know, talk about this interesting topic that piqued my interest. And this is going to be a discussion overall about, in my view, one of the best fighters and one of the top boxers in the world, that being Mr. Terrence Bud Crawford. And the conversation overall in this video is going to be not only about who Terrence Bud Crawford is going to face next, but maybe all in all how his career is going to transpire or how it's going to turn out within these next few years. And in my view, what Terrence Bud Crawford is going to have to do in order to at least debatably be at that number one pound for pound spot. You know, Terrence Crawford, when it comes down to what he really reminds me of overall, if I want to <laughs> compare it like this, he almost kind of reminds me of a Drew Brees or overall that of a Russell Wilson, you know, and basically what do I mean by that? You know, a lot of people, of course, would like to debate that, you know, Terrence Bud Crawford, that he is one of the best boxers in the world. There's a lot of people that would debate that he is the overall best boxer in the world, that he is the number one pound for pound fighter. And when you take a look at him, you understand overall why people, you know, think that when it comes down to it. And I don't want to completely compare it to Russell Wilson or Drew Brees 100% because I don't think anyone would ever take a look at Russell Wilson or Drew Brees at any moment in time as the all-around best or most talented quarterback in the league, even though maybe there were certain people that may have said that at certain times, but usually very rarely. My point being is this. It's kind of like with Drew Brees and Russell Wilson, when you take a look at it, arguing Terrence Crawford's pound-for-pound pound spot. When you really take a look at Drew Brees and Russell Wilson, there was multiple years that a lot of people really thought that they should have won the MVP or that they were really, really close. But at the end of the day, they just didn't overall pop off overall the map, kind of like what a Tom Brady did or Patrick Mahomes or... Maybe someone overall, you know, someone else within the league, you know, or an Aaron Rodgers. You know, Terrence Bud Crawford, unfortunately for him at the end of the day, even though I think that his skill set could maybe potentially put him at the number one pound for pound spot, I just don't think all in all that he's there yet. And I know a lot of people, you know, they'll disagree with me. There's certain people I'll know, of course, that say, oh, what are you talking about? You know, Terrence is certainly debatably there. Well, I think that you have to have a better resume to debatably be at the number one pound for pound spot. And to be quite honest with you, it's not even just Canelo Alvarez that I personally put above Terrence Bud Crawford on my pound for pound list. As I've already said personally before, I'm a results oriented person. And basically what that means is that in my view, if you're a person that has clearly won bigger fights in your career, then you obviously deserve more of the spoils. You deserve more of the credit because we can say that Terrence Bud Crawford, we can say that we believe that he is the most skilled fighter on the planet all we want to which personally, you know, I probably would give that, you know, great to Canelo Alvarez. But if you were to put Terrence Crawford out there, I certainly would understand why. At the end of the day, the bottom line is this. Terrence Bud Crawford, when you take a look at the best wins in his career, even though he certainly doesn't have a horrendous resume or anything like that, the resume, in my view, is not enough to put him at the number one pound for pound spot. I think that it's a great thing that he's a three-way division champion. He obviously is a very exceptionally skilled fighter. He is a person that, in my view, <coughs> excuse me, is exceptionally dominant, but at the end of the day, when the biggest win of your career is a win over Sean Porter, who at the time was not even a champion and was a person that already had three losses in his career. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to degrade that win by any means. All I'm saying is that we basically already know who Sean Porter was. That's not me saying that Terrence Crawford fought him at the worst point. I could go on this narrative like a lot of other channels try to do about certain fighters that they don't like, such as Dante's vaccination or something like that, or boxing ego we all know what they try to push with Canelo and they always try to say oh well Canelo he's trying to fight fighters that already have losses and blah 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 but then when it comes to fighters like Terrence Crawford or Earl Spence that they like all of a sudden those narratives don't exist anymore <laughs> so the bottom line is this I'm not going to be a person that does that at the end of the day Terrence Crawford in my view he did defeat Sean Porter when he was at the best point in his career or pretty much the best that he ever was going to be but the problem with Sean Porter is this I don't think that he's an A-plus fighter there's even certain people that have not even debate that he's an A-grade fighter, period. I would say that Sean Porter, in my view, is an A-minus fighter. The problem is, is that you have certain fighters out there that, in my view, have bigger wins in their career. Yeah, people like Ken Alvarez, to where, forget it. I mean, his resume is so expansive that you can't even debate it. And then you also have people out there, maybe like Alexander Usyk, who, you know, he did unify a cruiserweight division. He unified all the belts. And at the time, it was somewhat, you know, talented. Not A-grade talented consistently, maybe, but decently talented not only that but he just got that very very phenomenal win over Anthony Joshua and overall he ended up pretty much embarrassing him so my point being is this Alexander Usyk you can debate maybe in his career has been more dominant and all in all basically has actually gotten bigger wins in his career I don't even think that that's really debatable it just is what it is at least when it came to that win over Anthony Joshua but if one were to put Terrence Crawford over Alexander Usyk 
I would understand it. But at the current moment, I even have Alexander Usyk over Terrence Crawford. And then that leads us to Earl Spence Jr. and Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury is at about number three or number four on my pound for pound list. And certain people, they may take a look at it and they may say, well, why is that? Because Tyson Fury, at the end of the day, not only did he, he, did he defeat Vladimir Klitschko those several years ago, when Vladimir Klitschko was looked at as a unanimous top five pound for pound fighter on pretty much everyone's list, and not only did he embarrass him, he also embarrassed Deontay Wilder pretty much on three separate occasions. And Deontay Wilder, even though, yes, he had holes in his game, Deontay Wilder is probably one of the four most prominent heavyweights that have existed overall within the past 10 plus years. So at the end of the day, Tyson Fury deserves every bit of credit. And I just don't know if Terrence Bud Crawford, I don't know if he's ever really been in a fight like that, like with a Vladimir Klitschko or an Anthony Joshua or overall a Gennady Triple G Golovkin or someone like that. Basically, what am I saying here? Terrence Crawford hasn't really been in that Sugar Ray Leonard versus Tommy Hearns type of matchup yet. He hasn't overall really been in that Marvin Hagler Sugar Ray Leonard matchup or that Floyd Mayer the Junior versus Miguel Cotto or Floyd Mayer the Junior versus Manny Pacquiao matchup, that Manny Pacquiao versus Juan Manuel Marquez matchup. You know what I'm getting at. The bottom line is this. If Terrence Crawford, in my view, within the next few years, is even overall going to have a possible chance at that, you know, number one pound per pound spot, he is going to have to defeat that of Earl Spence Jr. And, of course, that leads us to the next point of our discussion, which is who possibly he may face next. Now, according to rumors, I've heard that Danny Garcia is a slight possibility. I've also heard that Keith Thurman is a slight possibility. And that maybe turns Bud Crawford that he will sign a two-fight deal with that of the PBC. I do think all in all that that personally, in my view, is the best option available. The reason why I say that is because pretty much all the other elite welterweight fighters, they're with that of the PBC. You have Danny Garcia. You have Jerome Boutsenis. You have Keith Thurman. You have, you know, Danny Garcia, if I didn't mention him. You have a few others there. Earl Spence Jr., of course, is still at the top of the pack. And right now, Earl Spence Jr. has to be looked at as the better overall welterweight, or at least the one that's accomplished more. So he has to be ranked as all in all the number one welterweight in the world. Now, taking a look at it on the surface... I believe that Terrence Crawford is actually more skilled than that of an Earl Spence Jr., but it's a very competitive fight. The bottom line is this. If Terrence Crawford were able to beat Earl Spence Jr., and if he especially were able to beat him in some of a dominant fashion, which is possible, you never know overall what's going to happen, you know, then maybe you can debate that Terrence Bud Crawford deserves to be at that number one pound per pound spot, even over Canelo Alvarez. Because Canelo, of course, when he did defeat that top five pound per pound fighter, you know, Gennady Triple G Golovkin, who, which I thought was a fair ranking at the time, you know, Gennady Golovkin, in my view, did win that first fight against Canelo. And the second fight was pretty much a seven rounds to five fight. So if Terrence Crawford is able to clearly win the fight, say like eight rounds to four, maybe nine rounds to three, when it comes down it, maybe you can debate that Terrence Bud Crawford actually deserves to be the number one overall pound for pound fighter once and for all. But overall, even with that win over Earl Spence Jr., in my view, it's still going to be very hard to surpass Canelo Alvarez. And the reason why that is, is because Canelo was pretty much going after the light heavyweight division. And if Canelo Alvarez actually does end up defeating that of Dimitri Bivol, and then after that ends up defeating Arthur B to Beef, in my view, it's going to be very, very hard for Terrence Crawford to surpass Canelo Alvarez as the number one pound for pound fighter. He'll have a chance, or he may be right there. But if Canelo Alvarez is actually successful in clearly beating Dimitri Bivol and Arthur B to Beef, it's going to be very, very difficult, in my opinion, for Terrence Crawford to surpass that of a Canelo Alvarez as the number one pound for pound fighter. And the reason why I say that is because Terrence Crawford has never really been in a weight division, in my opinion, to where in terms of his size, he really can't handle them. Canelo Alvarez now has been within a couple of weight divisions to where you can argue, yes, he's a bit stocky overall, you know, in general, but Caleb Plant and Billy Joe Saunders, well, Billy Joe Saunders, he's around the same size as them, but Callum Smith and Caleb Plant and Sergey Kovalev, all those guys are naturally lankier, bigger when it came down to it, and just naturally bigger fighters than what a Canelo Alvarez was. So it just is what it is. And next, he's facing a Demetra Bivol. Basically, that would be, like I said, and I've already compared it like this, that would be if Terrence Crawford several years ago fought a primary Sonny Laura at 154, someone who was lankier than him, bigger than him, when he came down to it, could compete with him in terms of power, skill, boxing IQ, when he came down to it, and actually was able to beat him. That's overall how big this win, in my opinion, is if Canelo can get that victory. That's why Terrence Crawford, if he does defeat Earl Spence Jr., he certainly will be in the discussion. In my view, as the number one pound for pound fighter, especially depending on how the fight goes down. But at the end of the day, it is going to be a very tall task, in my opinion, to be the number one pound for pound fighter, you know, with Terrence Bud Crawford. But we'll see what happens. Another question overall, certain people may ask me as well, if he does face Danny Garcia or if overall he does face that of Keith Thurman next, what do you personally think about those fights? I think that they're both very decent fights. 
I think that Danny Garcia, I think that Keith Thurman, and if I wanted to spread a narrative here, I could go as far to say, oh, well, Keith Thurman and Danny Garcia, they've already lost when it came down to it, so we can't count those as A-grade wins. Listen, at the end of the day, I know a fighter, once again, that is washed up, and I know a fighter that is not. I don't think that Danny Garcia and Keith Thurman are washed up, per se, but what I will say is that I don't think that they're on the same level as an Earl Spence Jr. I don't think that they're A-plus fighters. I think that Keith Thurman, if he's even lucky at this point in time in his career, is an A fighter, if not an A minus, because Keith Thurman, of course, the last time that we seen him in the ring against a legitimate champion, he lost, and in my view, clearly lost against a forty, <laughs> a forty-one year old Manny Pacquiao. So at the end of the day, Keith Thurman, you know, some criticism does have to be laid upon him. He was in that ring last time with Mario Barrios, didn't get the knockout, but whatever, he ended up completely winning the fight, if not every single round, almost every single round. I think that the Keith Thurman fight, personally, in my view, would be the better fight. I think that it would maybe debatably be the more popular fight and would be the better fight since Keith Thurman is the only other welterweight that Earl Spence Jr. has not gone after, but hey, it is what it is. Danny Garcia is a decent fight as well. I just don't think that Danny Garcia, I don't think that he's really any higher overall than that of a Sean Porter. So unfortunately, even though these wins, in my view, are very, very decent, I don't know if beating a Danny Garcia, in my view, really puts you any higher in the pound for pound list. But what I will say is this, it's still a decent fight nonetheless, and I would rather see a Danny Garcia than someone overall, <laughs> someone that I didn't know overall, someone like Aegis Kavalaskis. So if Terrence Crawford does go down this route, I think that it's a very, very decent route to take. I think all in all that it gives us a couple of very decent fights. And hopefully, hopefully all in all, after the Keith Thurman or Danny Garcia fight, we do get to see an Earl Spence Jr. versus Terrence Bud Crawford fight, the fight that pretty much everyone has been waiting for now for the past few years. So we'll see all in all what happens. But anyways, that's pretty much all I got for today on this conversation. But it's going to be very interesting to see where Terrence Bud Crawford goes from here because I believe all in all the dude turns 36 years old this year or somewhere around there, which means what, you know, now certain fighters age differently. And Terrence Bud Crawford, he is somewhat defensively responsible, but that may also mean that he doesn't really have much more time. So at the end of the day, Terrence Crawford, if he's going to be remembered as one of those all-time great fighters, and in my view, you can tell that he's a greatly skilled fighter. We can try to degrade him all we want to when it comes out if we wanted to and say all in all that he may not have the best resume. But at the end of the day, we can tell that Terrence, he is a very special fighter. And at the end of the day, I don't think that he would have handled Sean Porter the way that he did all in all if he was not an all-time greatly skilled fighter. But to be within that top 20, top 30 range even when it comes down to how some, some people may not even have Terrence Crawford within their top 50 fighters of all time. For you to overall be within that top 50 definitive fighters of all time, you're going to have to defeat Earl Spence Jr., in my view, when it comes down to it. And you're probably even going to have to make a couple of other moves, like defeat the winner of Jamel Charlo and Brian Gastano. But we'll see on and on what happens. But anyways, that's really about it for today. I just thought that I would talk about that because I thought that it was particularly interesting. And that's really about it for this conversation. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I'll talk to you all later. And we'll see where Mr. Terrence Bud Crawford goes from here. But I'm going to be very excited to see what fight he takes next. Anyways, that's really about it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you all later.